Hello everyone at New Hope. This is James Weaver and as you can see I'm looking dapper and I've got my grandbaby dog. Her name is Lucille named after my mother and she's a cutie. My mom would be very very proud that I finally named something after her although it wasn't my idea it was my daughter Taylor Layden married to Eric uh, idea and I'm in their backyard doing a little Devo for devotional for Tuesday. And so we're very happy. And so I love this little boogie here. She's a doll. And I wanna turn your attention to a couple things that I believe is really important. In Hebrews chapter 10, it talks about the better covenant of being the blood of Jesus. It talks about in the first four verses, how that the old system, verse one, this is the NLT under the law of Moses, was only a shadow, a dim preview of the good things to come, not the good things themselves. The sacrifices in that old system was done day after day, again and again, and it just, it was just a temporary thing. Uh, it was a foreshadow. It was a casting to the future, uh, the, the final provision of the work of the cross of what Jesus did. And so um, it's very important that we understand that the only thing that can take away sin is the blood of Jesus. At the end of the chapter, it talks about not insulting the spirit of grace and being careful to live right and to not just continue living in sin and going, oh, well, the blood of Jesus has us covered um, because it's taking lightly such a holy thing that God did in giving his own son. But the part of the, this passage in Hebrews 10 that I wanted to bring to you was that, that I wanna point out today is that talk starts in uh, verse number uh, eight, 19, a call to persevere and continue on. And it says, so dear brothers and sisters, we can boldly enter into the heaven's most holy place because of the blood of Jesus. By his death, Jesus, Jesus opened the new and life-giving way through the curtain into the most holy place. Now, that was my daughter correcting Lucille. Lucille, behave yourself. Now, if you want to go to heaven, you got to be a good doggy, okay? And so by his death, Jesus opened the new and living, giving way through the curtain into the most holy place. And since we have a great high priest who rules over God's house, let us go right to the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting him for our guilty conscience have been our guilty consciences have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean and our bodies have been washed with pure water. Aren't you thankful for that, the blood of Jesus? So it says, let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope that we affirm. For God can be trusted to keep his promises. Quit eating my finger, you little mutt. <laughs> uh, let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. I wanna stop there and read that again. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. You know, in our world, the political realm, it just continues to bring divisiveness and divisiveness. And that's not the heart of God, not for his church. And there's a lot of things that aren't biblical. And a lot of times we don't have the edge on every angle of every truth. And we can become in contention to our brothers in Christ and brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. And uh, so listen, there's a way that continue, even though we're not meeting together physically, or some of us will this next week, but some of you won't can do that because it's you know, wise not to quite yet because of your age or health. And so there's ways to do that. That's to get on the phone, talk to each other. You know, don't wait for the church to reach to you. You are the church. Reach to one another. Call the person living alone. Call people that are struggling or and check on people. Be in connection with each other. That's spurring one another in good works and love and encouraging one another. That's an important thing to do. And then the passage picks up and it goes on and it says this. Uh, and it says, after let us think of ways to motivate one, or, one another to acts of love and good works. And he says, let us neither neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. I think we know that the day of the Lord is his return is drawing near. And it says, do not neglect meeting together. Oh, great. There goes my phone. When you use your phone for the Bible, you got to start over. Doggone it. So the part I want you to really focus on is that let us think of ways 
to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. We can do that by connecting with each other on the phone, through email, social media. You know, social media can be a really negative thing. And we don't want to be divisive. There's a lot of things nobody knows everything about. And we can be so opinionated and we can be so negative and we can be so critical and we can be so opinionated and everybody has their opinion. But listen, let's stay to the opinion of the book, of the Holy Word of God, of what Jesus told us to do. And that is to be merciful, compassionate, loving, kind, forgiving one another, not judging one another. And let's do the things that are spiritual and eternal and do the work of God, do the work of God and uh, continue to... Uh, uh, to uh, think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And then it says, let us not neglect our meeting together. And I know that some of you need to, to not come out physically, even though we're starting this, sun, this Sunday. And by the way, the 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock, and 12 o'clock services are great. Trust me, if we have to do a 2 o'clock, if we have to do a 4 o'clock, a 6 o'clock, an 8 o'clock, we're going to make sure everyone that wants to, to come to service. But it helps us protect everyone to, to maintain the social distancing by people signing up. And just don't be confused because the little thing you get with some barcode, we're not checking when people come, just come. If you sign up, that gives us a number and then you can come and we'll have enough room to be, uh, you know, distancing, socially distancing safely. And we can, we can do that. So don't, don't feel like, you know, this is a, not something to, to uh, be a negative. It's something to you're good and protect you. So, so, but right now that we can't meet together, but we can talk to each other, right? We can connect on the phone because the church isn't just a service. The church is us and we can do that with one another. And then finally it says, uh, especially now it says, do not encourage, it says, but encourage one another, you know, don't neglect their meeting together as some do, but encourage one another. We can all do that on the phone in all kinds of ways, especially now the day of his return is drawing near. Okay. So he's coming back soon. We know that, church. Be the church. I want to pray for you, and I want to encourage you to love and keep ministering. And thank you for being faithful in helping us be benevolent. Again, the, today, we're checking with the food pantry. We're helping families again. We're, we're, we're doing great with our missions. Uh, and thank you for being a great church. And I uh, hope that you'll share this maybe on your Facebook page. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for everybody watching this, whether I know them or not, that your grace would be rich to them and their trust wouldn't be in the law or the goodness or the things they do, but in Jesus Christ and that we wouldn't take it for granted, but we would be thankful for it and we would uh, uh, continue to praise you for your mercy and grace and not, and again, not just trample on the spirit of grace or take advantage of your love. Let us not continue in sin but turn from it every day and call on your name, Jesus. And I thank you so much for so many good messages coming out from all the pastors. And I hope we'll take heed to all of them in Christ's name. I want to bring up Pastor Kerry's message Sunday night. If you didn't see that message, please do me a favor. Go to the Sunday night and look at it. It's one of the best messages I've ever seen and very pertinent. I believe a word from God about having the Holy Spirit fire in our life. Take time to listen. It was a phenomenal message. Sunday night, go back and listen. God be with you. You little monkey.